Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Uh, God, who at sundry times, this is King James Version, that means various times and in various manners spoken time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom he also made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. The word of God for the people of God. Father in heaven, we come before you once again, Lord God, with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you, Lord God, today for your love, mercy, grace. We thank you for another opportunity to come and to sing praise into your great and holy name, to give to you out of what you have entrusted us with. And now, Lord God, to hear your life-transforming word, we do ask you to cause every distraction in our hearts and minds to be pushed aside. And we pray, Father, that you would cause our focus and attention to be upon you, that you would give us ears to hear what you have to say today, Lord God. God, and that you would enlighten the understanding of our hearts, Father. Pray for courage and wisdom to apply your word to our lives, that your name may be glorified by our living. We ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. God, who had various times and in various manners spoken time past, unto the fathers by the prophets, as in these last days spoken unto us by his son. God spoke, reminds us that God has always been eager to make his will known to mankind. You, know, you think about it, and um, right out of the gate, he revealed his will to Adam. You know, in Genesis chapter two, in, verse, uh, in verses 16 and 17, when God put Adam in the Garden of Eden, and, he, and then he gave him commands. He said, the Lord commanded the man, saying, look, this is my will. You can eat off of every tree of the garden, right? But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For if you eat off of that tree, and the day you eat it, you shall sure, surely die. And one thing I noticed is that when God put Adam and Eve in the garden, right out of the gate, you know, he didn't just sit in there and he had to wonder, like, you know, what, what am I supposed to do? Well, I, well, I don't know what, you know, who knows? You know, like some people try to act today, who you never know? No, God has a specific will and he wants that will to be known to man, right? The, the biggest thing for us is that our heart desires to do his will because I've said it for years that God gives revelation at where there is a desire to live his will, not just to give us information so we can say, oh, I know stuff, right? Um, God's word is directive, right? It gives us direction, but it's also liberating. It gives us liberty and it frees us from, especially now since, since you know, Adam has sinned, they vi and Adam violated God's word, and the Bible says that, you know, sin came into the world, you know, through Adam and it's passed to all of us because we know death is passed. I mean, we've all sinned. Um, and so, we had the mercy, without God's word, we had the mercy of our feelings. We had the mercy of oh, what other people say and, they, and who had the mercy of their feelings. Right? And so the, one of the worst things we can do is just you know, feed off of each other without God's word because we're talking about one sinner influencing another sinner. Or as Jesus said, it would be like the blind leading the blind. Right? If the blind leads the blind, Jesus says, you know, there's no, nobody's being helped out right there. And so we need God's word that it directs us and it liberates us. It frees us from having to go with just what I feel. To go with, 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 with what I believe is, is, is a good thing. Because there's a way that seems right to a man, the Bible says. But he says the end is a way of destruction. Right? So we need God's word, and, God, and so God speaks to us. And at one time, what, what, what uh, the writer of the Hebrews points out here is that there was a point where God was speaking through a third party. Right? He was speaking through a third party. The prophets would come, and they would say, thus said, thus said the Lord. He said, now he's spoken to us by his son. Right? He's spoken to us by his son, who is the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, right? That the Old Testament prophets were always careful because they were speaking somebody else's word. And what you saw Jesus do 
Jesus would say things like, you have heard it said, but I say unto you. And he was speaking authoritatively because he wasn't speaking somebody else's word. He was speaking his word, his words, right? Jesus spoke authoritative. I'll give you an example in Matthew 7, verses 28 and 29. It came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, he had been speaking, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Why? For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. See, so the scribes were, you know, were, were, you know, teaching the word. They were like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to get it straight and tell you what God said. And Jesus comes along and said, I don't have to try to tell you what, you know, get it straight. He said, I am. I, I'm it. I'm the word. And so one of the things I understand is that um, if the people of the Old Testament were required to listen to the word that was spoken through the third party, through the prophet, when the prophet said, thus said the Lord, they were required to listen. How much more are we required to listen to the, to the one who is the word, right? Through Jesus, because he says in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son. And so he speaks to us through the word. And, you know, and for particularly, you know, you know, the Old Testament is there. And, you know, and, and the Bible says that it is written for our examples and our warnings and our admonition. And then we have these letters in the New Testament that are giving us directives for Christian living. And you and I got to listen to that because that is God speaking. It is God speaking. And so we got to think about it, right? If, there, if, there, if, there's a, if there's a resistance that, you know, you find it hard to, to, to read the Bible or to, or to come to church and to hear the word, where's that coming from? It has to be a you know, resistance that's coming from an enemy coming from a flesh, a sinful nature, and a devil on the outside, and a worldly system that doesn't want us to hear from God. Because if we don't hear, if we don't hear from God, then, then where are we getting our marching orders from? Are you with me? Because we all get marching orders from somewhere because we live and we do things, right? And what we live and do is based on something. It's based on what we're hearing based on, on, on information that we're getting. And what I'm saying to you today is that we got to get the information from God. Right? Because when God originally created man, the first thing he did is he gave him the information. And if we don't have God's information, then we're going to live off of somebody else's information. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? Amen. If the people of the Old Testament listen to the prophets who spoke the word of God, how much more does he require us to listen to Jesus, who is the word? John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and that word was God. Listen to this in, in Matthew chapter 12, verses 41. Well, verse 41. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And indeed, a greater than Jonah is here. So Jesus said, you remember when Jonah went to preach to Nineveh? And the Bible says they heard him preach and they repented at his word. Third party. Right? And Jesus goes on. You read verse 42. I don't have it. He goes on to say how the queen of the south came. I mean, the queen of Sheba came to, to see Solomon. Because she heard about his great wisdom. Right? And she came to hear this great wisdom. And Jesus said, one greater than Solomon is here. She, they're going to rise up and condemn generations like ours if we fail to listen to the word of God that is coming from, the, from Jesus. Are you with me? The New Testament is, is comprised, is made up of letters from God. These letters are written to you. Have you read them? Do you look into them? Right? That is the primary way that God's speaking. I know people who want to hear what God has said. I want to know God's will on this. I want to know God's will on that. Until you begin to look into the word and respect God, what he's revealed, it's going to be hard for God to say anything to you instead of go to my Bible. Right? God, I want you to give me, tell me what you want me to do in this. Go to the Bible. And first of all, respect the hearing from me. Get, get an ear for me. Are you with me? Get an ear for me in my word. And then you can be able to hear God in other situations. 
This is the this is the this is the way God God who at various times and, and different men. Do you think there ever was a time when 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 Israel is out there with and they have the prophet and they respect him because they knew this man has the word of God. And he stands up and he says, Look, Samuel's about to speak, and everybody's giving him his attention. And he said, Thus said the Lord. And now we got the Bible. And I'm gonna be honest with you, we got the Bible. And as a whole, you know, as a Christian nation, there's a lot of neglect in the Word of God, right? And this is about, hey, changing that. Because God is speaking to us. Because we will never be who God wants us to be without first hearing what he says in his, in his Word. In his Word. Now he, now, he gives us teachers to help clean out things, right? But let me tell you, revelation is not going to come from me. Revelation is going to come from God, right? What well, well my job is, is to try to help you to understand things better, what he said, to, to, to help you understand better what he said. But I ain't speaking new revelation. I ain't saying, thus said the Lord, the Lord told me to tell you to do this, and you're supposed to run and do it. You got to hear God speak, and you got to get used to his word, because that is the main way you listen to God, and that is the way you condition your ears to hear God, is under getting revelation and reading his word. He's starting to understand things. But you just people, you have people that they don't want, they don't want to hear God. I mean, they don't, want, they don't want to read God's word and take time to read God's word. I'm talking about Christians, but they want, you know, want to always run to hear God, you know, oh, a prophet over there, let him tell me something. Let me tell you something. We went to go see T.D. Jakes one time, right? This was years ago. Uh, you know, he came to Bethany, he went to see T.D. Jakes. And, you know, you, you got a popular preacher, but we wanted to see T.D. Jakes. You know, we, 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 we liked Jakes at the time, for sure. And I was thinking... Well, we, so we stood outside trying to wait to get in because, you know, it was like fun, first come, first serve. And man, we sat out there a long time. I'm in that line trying to wait to get in there. And I'm thinking, if we stand out that long to wait to go see a man speak, we ought to sure pick up our Bibles, right? We ought to pick up our Bibles and, and tarry a while and hear God speak. Because, you know, hopefully the man is speaking God's word, but... We got, the, we got, the, we got the, the unfiltered word of God right here. Straight from God's mouth to our hearts. Are you with me? And, and it was just, you know, and there's nothing wrong. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. People did it. And, you know, we understand we, we, we're people. And if you got popularity, you may go to a, you want to go to the concert or whatever, and you're going to stand in line for tickets. There's nothing wrong with that. But all the thing I'm doing is, is comparing and saying, look, if we will go through something for, for, for those type of things, how much more we ought to take advantage of the word of God? That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying anything's wrong with any of that, right? You want to go to the concert, you want to go to the ball game or whatever, and you got to get in line, you got to go do parking. All of that's great and fine, but you know what I'm saying? God is looking. All right? And if he's saying I'm willing to go through all of this to get to these other things, I should be able to go through a little, you know, sleepiness or whatever it takes. I need to get into God's word. And you got to force yourself and you got to get strategic about it because there's, a, there's opposition. That's all, that's all I'm telling you is that there's a flesh. We all have a sinful nature. Paul said, in my flesh, there is no good thing. We got bad stuff inside of us that don't want God's word. We got a world system that doesn't encourage us to, to get to God's word. You can turn your TV on and you can have a thousand channels and it might not be three of them that tell you to get to God's word. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? I told you when I went to, when I had the free Sirius satellite uh, radio that came with the vehicle, this was years ago, it may, it may have increased it now or whatever, because uh, I don't have it. But I was like, it was a sample and I was like, golly, they got like a hundred and seven stations on here. And I got to search hard and long to try to find a couple of them that's going to encourage me to serve God. Right? She says three of them, right? It's like, goodness. So you got to understand that the design of the world is not going to help you be who God wants you to be. You got to make sure you get to God's word and listen to him because the Bible informs you of the type of person God wants you to be. The Bible informs you. If you don't get God's word, you're going to come up with an idea of what pleases God, but there, it may not be an idea that is consistent with what God says. The Bible informs it. It instructs us. I look into the word and it instructs us regarding our actions, our attitudes, our intentions, our desires, and our behavior. It gives us the instructions, right? And so as I begin to think about these letters uh, that God has written, because they're written to you and I. 
And we have a great advantage in our day too of, um, you know, I mean, we can, we can be driving down the street, driving down the road, and still listen to God's word if we want to. That's a great advantage we have now. Once upon a time, that didn't exist. You couldn't, you couldn't, you know, ride down the road and listen to the Bible. But if you want to, you can now because you can play it through your, through your pod, your phone, or in your car, whatever. So we have, we have great advantages. Great advantages now. I remember hearing about um, some missionaries that had gone overseas. I don't know, uh, I forgot if it was uh, in one of the uh, Chinese countries or something like that. And the Bible was not, well, it was not open to, you know, the country was not open to the Bible. And so there had to be some, you know, methods that they would take to hear God's word. And the people, the guy said, it, they went down there, they just read the Bible. They had a little secret meeting. And then people stood up and let them listen to them read the Bible for hours. He said, and when they finished reading it, reading it, you know, like four hours, they were just reading the scriptures, reading the scriptures, the people were just listening. And when they finished, the people said, can we come back tomorrow? Because they were so hungry for the word of God. The word was rare, and they were hearing these instructions. Hungry for it. I get convicted hearing stuff like that. Because we can have the word much as we, much as we want to, right? I can have God's word many hours of the day. But how many do I actually get? We got to look into it. We got to listen to it. God is speaking. He's speaking. It's from these letters that I've discovered what God wants from me. I've discovered what he wants me to be. I've discovered things. I've discovered that God wants me to reverence him. I didn't know anything about that. I used to go to church. I grew up going to church. But it wasn't until I got into the word of God that I began to discover that God wants me to have this respect for him. This reverence for him. Right? That, I, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of that. He wants me to reverence him. I didn't know that. It's the word that taught me that. That taught me that he wanted me to have this, this respect for him as God. He wanted me to care about his will. I'm just going to church, getting my card punched, and I was at church, and I, you know, at least I go to church, and then I began to read the Bible, and I, I discovered that he wants me to have this respect for him, and he wants me to care about his will, right? Not just my will. Every, before that, everything, anytime I would pray, it was only about my will. I'm praying for something. Right? I'm praying and asking for something that I wanted. And then I begin to look into God's word and I discover that what God wants me to care about is his will. Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. And then he says, all the stuff in life you need, he'll add it to you. I, I found out that my, if, if my heart's desire was for his will, God already wanted to give me the things I needed, but I, I needed to develop a hunger and a desire for his will. And those things that I was deficient in, on my knees in prayer. That is how you accomplish it. And so my prayers begin to change. I begin to not just pray for, Lord, do this for me. Bless my family here. Lord, shape me. Mold me. Lord, Lord, you know, help, help me to love you. Help me to want what you want. Are you with me? Amen. Your prayers change because you begin to look into God's word and discover things that God wants from you. That he, I found out that he wanted me to love him. And he wanted me to trust him and to be in agreement with him. To be in agreement with him. Regardless of who it causes me to be out of harmony with, I needed to be in agreement with God. But it's the word that taught me that. He taught me that in his word, I discovered that he wanted me to faithfully discharge my duties. That all of us have duties, right, and stations in life. Whether you're a child or an adult, you have a, at your station in life, there's a duty that God has for you. Children, he says, your duty is to honor and obey your parents. Isn't that right? Right. And, and, and I want, so I had to faithfully discharge my duty as a father, as a pastor, as a community member, you know, as a husband. I had to faithfully discharge my duties and I needed God's word to guide me in how to make that happen or to let me see his will and to see the, and to and to recognize the feelings that I had that were contrary to his will so that I can be back on my knees praying, saying, Lord, help me. Because if I don't have the word, I got the feelings, and now I'm just going to live by my feelings. But I got God's word telling me sometimes that, hey, son, your feelings are not right. And so I know what I can pray for. Are you with me?
God's word that I found out that he created me to be salt and light, to be a difference maker in the world, to be a difference maker in the world. I live with that, that I want to make a, a difference, right? That I want to make a difference. God created you to make a difference. And if you're going to desire to make a difference, you got to put yourself out there sometimes to try to do something. And you put yourself out there. Sure, there'll be criticism, this and that. Anybody who puts himself out there. Everybody who worked, lived for God and put themselves out there, starting with Jesus, open themselves up to criticism. But if you're going to make a difference, you got to do it. And that's what God created you for, to make a difference, to be salt and light. That's why you're created in Christ Jesus. You are the salt of the earth, the light of the world. You got to be an example to other believers. Be kind hearted. It was the Bible that taught me those things, to be compassionate, that God wants me to be merciful, right? That don't always, you know, deal with people the way, they, the way they should be dealt with, but to give them mercy when they need it because I need mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Are y'all with me? It's the Bible that, I, I, that reminds me that I have to be forgiving. That when somebody wrongs me, I have to be forgiving. Feelings don't always remind me of that. Do feelings always remind you of that? Somebody does you wrong, if the first feeling is, oh, I feel like forgiving. No, you feel like cracking upside the head or something, right? It's the Bible that reminds you to be, or instructs you to be forgiving. You gotta have God's word, and you gotta keep getting it because these situations keep coming, and you gotta keep overcoming and conquering your feelings. It's a scripture that I, I, I begin to learn that in this life that God wanted me to give and not only take. Because a natural, a natural tendency of a human heart, especially a fallen heart, is that we're trying to see what can we get, right? What have you done for me? We go and we take that same attitude to church. I mean, I need to get. I need, a good, I need to get. And if I ain't getting, I'm going somewhere where I can get. And I discovered, and listened to some guys years ago talk, and I discovered that God was putting me in a community to serve. I'm talking about a community of believers. He was putting me in the church, not just to get, but to give. But to give service, right? And so that's what you and I got to understand, that we come and we are gathered not just to receive, but to give. And so make sure when you come in, you know, you know, you don't just look for somebody to come speak to you. You go speak to people and go show love and go give encouragement. Are you with me? Because God's will is not for us just to get, but to give. Are you hearing me? Amen. It's the Bible that I, I discovered that I had to be sacrificial in my living. Before that, you know, it was about doing what pleased me, what satisfied me. And if you need something from me, if it's convenient, I'll help you. Otherwise, no, I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying? I, no, and I've discovered from the Bible that sometimes I gotta be sacrificial and I have to do something even though I don't feel like it, even though it's inconvenient, but it is gonna be a benefit and a blessing to you. You gotta be sacrificial in your living. But it's the scriptures that, that, that inform you of that. And without the, without the scriptures, I'm telling you, we're going to miss a lot of God's will without the scriptures. And me talking to you one day a week ain't enough because you're going to forget a lot of God's will. <laughs> you know, I mean, something, you know, if you ask me uh, Wednesday, what you preached on Sunday, sometimes I need a few minutes. Right? And I'm the one that did the preaching. So I know you might need a few minutes if you did the listening. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? Because we've got a lot going on, so we've got to keep plugging God's word in. Keep plugging it in. It's the word of God that, I, that, that, that taught me. When you know, I got saved and, and, I, and I understood that I needed to be uh, holy in my conduct. And so I go, okay, I'm going to be holy. I'm going to be holy. So in my mind, you know, be holy in my conduct. I mean, that means you're going to stop this, stop that, stop that, stop that, right? But then also uh, is the word of God that re revealed to me that it's not enough to just have personal holiness and purity. I got to be practical in my service. I got to do things with people that make a a difference. Like James said, if the person is cold and hungry and you say, oh, brother, be warm and be fed, bless you. So you ain't do nothing. You got to give them some food and give them some clothes. And so it's the Bible that instructs us that there's a practical nature to what we look at. When Jesus came on the scene, he came to go to the cross and die for our sins. But on the way there, he was practical as can be. 
He was healing and, and, and feeding. Are you with me? Right. And so we don't separate those. All of those things supplement, but it's the scripture that gives us that understanding and that clarity, guys. It's the Bible that informed me that I needed to be diligent in improving my character. Right? That I had to, I had to, I had to be diligent about improving and becoming better. Because it doesn't just happen by time. Right? It doesn't just happen, you know, that, it, that I needed to focus on it. And so that's going, and, and look, and all of these things I'm talking about, this drives us to our knees in prayer, asking God to, to, to work on me and to fix me up. And when I see things, like I said the other week, when I see things come out of my life, those are things for me to pray about because I realize that, oh, you know, I didn't realize, I, you know, I had this problem. Because like I said, when you see yourself sin, whatever it is, this is not a situation that has made you do that. The situation has just revealed that. Because there's nothing that can come out in your life that is not already there. Right? And so sometimes we don't, you know, the things we don't realize about ourselves because we have a tendency to want to be, you know, consider ourselves better than we are. But when a situation happens and I see myself do something, then I know that I still got that in me. You know, it might not be in me to the degree that it once was, but I still got to work on it. I still got to go in myself. It's the word of God that instructs me to consistently increase in his knowledge, in the knowledge of God, and in the wisdom of God. It's from the word that I discover that God wants me to be brave, to be passionate about his will and his work, to be ready to answer the attacks of critics. It's God's word that shows me this, right? Ready to give an answer. It's the word of God that tells me that, look, you got to be willing to fight for the faith. Right? You gotta stand for the truth. You gotta defend it with your life if necessary. I learned this from the word. You know, this is, feelings don't teach this. The word of God teaches. It is God speaking that instructs us. In God's letters, essentially what I discovered is that He wants me to be like Christ. He wants me to be like Christ. It showed me what He wants, but it also shows me how to accomplish it. And also realize that it takes a lifetime of looking into God's word to become all that he wants you to be. A lifetime. And you don't have tomorrow, but you got today. Are you with me? Amen. And the wise thing would be to use today so that should you be here tomorrow, you build, on tomorrow, build tomorrow on what you've already started today. Increasing in the knowledge and the wisdom of God. Because the word of God is powerful. It, is, it has power. It transforms lives. Right? It is, it is God speaking. Think about it. It is God speaking. And God speaks things into existence. And so if he speaks, you get into his word and he is speaking into your life. He is speaking liberty and, and power and breakthroughs. I mean, look at, the, look at the creation of God from the, in the book of Genesis, first two chapters. And everything that's here, God spoken into existence. And God said, let there be. And God said, let there be. And we need to look into God's word and see how God's word says, you know, you, that you can be more than a conqueror. You can do all things. Through God. Let that get inside of you and let it work because it is truth. It's powerful. Yes. Let me tell you something. The power of God's word is often dependent on the, on the belief of the individual, right? The faith of the individual. There's a man that came to Jesus, and I'm closing, so uh, don't get upset because uh, I'm about to stop because I know y'all want me to keep going because it's good stuff. But man came to Jesus, and he said, Jesus, my son, the devil got a hold of him and keeps slamming him down in the fire and messing all over him and this, this, that, whatever, right? And Jesus said to the, I mean, the man in Mark 9, 23, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Man, it's like, I need you to help me, right? I need you to help me. But listen to this. Jesus says, if you can believe, when you look into God's word and you hear God speak, if you could just believe what he says, 
Right? If you can believe what he says, that you can be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, right? That you can conquer any any deficiency, right? That you can overcome every 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 habit that you've had that is not consistent with God's word. If you believe that you can be shaped and conformed to the image of Christ, because this is what the scripture tells us, that it is God's will for us. We need to believe it. Ephesians 1, 18, 19, Paul told Ephesians, he said, this is, this is what I'm praying, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. Lord. When you believe what God has said, his power is, is, is affected in your life. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm yes. saying to you? Yes. Because we are going to believe something. Mm -hmm. Right? We're going to believe something. We need to believe God. Who has believed the report of the Lord? That's what we need to believe, guys. Because remember this. Faith comes through the hearing of God's word. The more you expose yourself to it, the more confident you can become in it. The more you trust the word, the more of its power you experience in your life. You got stuff you want to get overcome, changes that you know need to happen, right? Oh, I wish I could just be, I could just love God's word and be hungry for it. And, and I wish I could just not desire this, this and that. You know, we got things that we desire and want. We just need to break free of them. Willpower ain't what God is looking for you to do. His power. But it starts with the word because the word is liberating. It gives you direction and it gives you power to break free. But you got to expose yourself to the word. You got to listen to God. Let him speak so you can speak liberty into your life. And the main way you're speaking is what? Through his word. That is the number one way he speaks. And the Holy Spirit of God is coming and he is working in consistent and in, in, in harmony with the word. And Jesus is giving us the, his word. It all starts with the word. And he'll never tell you to do anything that's contrary to his word. Faith comes by the hearing of the word. The more you expose yourself, the more you can believe it. The more you believe it, the more the power of God moves in your life. God is speaking. Will you listen? God is speaking. Will you go where he is? I thought about that today when we were singing that song, I want to be where you are. Right? I was like, that's not a, that's not a necessary thinking of it in the physical zone. I won't be over there, God, right there. I won't be where you are, God. I want to be where you're speaking, where, where your power is, where your will is. I want to be where you are on issues. I want to be where you are, you know, in, in, in relation to what's true and what's not true. I want to be on God's side. And his word is what puts me there. He's speaking in the Bible. Will you listen to him? Hear him out. Hear what he has to say. And watch this word work wonderfully and powerfully in your life. You don't have to struggle to get free. The word will make you free. Jesus says you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Amen. Stop right here.